Hey, everybody. Latest edition of the Colpack and Izzo podcast brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Colpack. I'm Dom Izzo. Homecoming week for North Dakota State. The Bison welcome in. The University of Northern Iowa comes calling. The Panthers off a big win over Youngstown State enter with a mark of three and one. You can say all you want about last week and rivalry, but Jeffrey, this was the rival before South Dakota State became the rival. The start, and it was Northern Iowa. And I, I feel like we're, we're give, we give this history lesson every year, but we have to. <laughs> worth repeating that it was Northern Iowa that taught North Dakota State how to play yeah. FCS football. And how you play FCS football is you need to get bigger, stronger, faster. It sounds easy, but you got to find guys that you can develop. And I'll just start rambling here, Don, if you don't mind. Go for it. I, I, I had this discussion with uh, Dominic and Ellis' parents who I, I did a story for our Saturday game day. And they were talking about the recruiting process. And Rachel Ganella said, I really appreciated how they really did all the vetting, meaning they did all the background. They were patient. They looked, uh, you know, in all corners. And I said, you know where that started? That started after 2009. Yep. Greg Bull went three and eight. He didn't like the way his recruiting philosophy was going. He changed up some of his staff. And he goes, when we go into schools from now on, I just don't want to hear the goddamn coach and what he has to say about <laughs> because every coach, every high school coach wants his kid to be a division one player. So he'll gloss over anything else that comes about. Wow. Instead, go talk to the building superintendent, go talk to the secretary, go talk to the assistant principal, go talk to a student or two, find some people in the hallway and say, Hey, what's Jimmy Shimtree really like? I know he's a good football player. Is he, do you like him? Does he have enemies? And so they change their recruiting philosophy to put it. I mean, I, I'm trying to go as long as I'm saying the word character, but I guess <laughs> I have to say it. They're trying to find these guys with character and it works. You get these guys in, they're good athletes, but you know, good athletes is one thing. Right. Finding a good athlete and then develop them and, and willing to put in the time, effort and blood, sweat and tears. Now, that's a totally different deal. And they, and they perfected it almost. That's a great story. Um, one other great story. I believe you were in St. Louis in July of 2008 for the first, when they still did media days in person. And that was when the poll came out, media poll, coaches poll, that had North Dakota State number one, had never played a game in the Valley, Northern Iowa two. And that did not go over well. That did not go over well with Northern Iowa specifically. Yeah. They felt slighted, and for a good reason. These guys coming into the league, they haven't been through it, and they're number one. Are you kidding me? Northern Iowa taught them a lesson in 2008. I can't remember the final score. The score was closer than what the, than what the game really was. Yeah. And, and James Ruffin comes in. He's a Northern Iowa defensive end, 6'4", <laughs> like 50. And Craig Bowl leaving, I, and, he, and he said something to the fact that – you know, BS and afterward, he goes, that's what we need to get to. Yeah. And that's what they look like, we don't look like that. And, and so that, that Northern Iowa taught NDSU a lesson on, on Valley football. Well, here comes Northern Iowa three and one. They made a quarterback change from, uh, from Will McElvain to Theo day. Who's a transfer from Michigan state. He's thrown five touchdowns, two picks over the last three games not necessarily a mobile guy, Cole Pack, but he runs the offense on how Northern Iowa wants to run it. He's been successful over the last three games, and they've won, obviously, yeah, all in, those games. Came in against Sac State when uh, the, when things were going so well, led his team to the second-half victory. I feel like, Dom, that Theo Day and Quincy Patterson are a lot alike, and they're a lot alike in this way, that coming out of high school, they were the dudes. Yep. And they were four-star, five-star Theo Day was the top quarterback, I believe, in the state of Michigan, certainly the top dual threat, goes to Michigan State and hardly sniffs the field. And again, recruiting is, is such a weird deal. It's not a given just because you're a four or five star. In fact, I'll go back to my Craig Bull story. He said, forget about the damn stars. <laughs> forget about it. We, I don't care about what kind of star they are. Yep. What do you see on film? Who's making plays? Are they, you know, are they fast? Are they, you know, quick? Use your gut instinct when you come to evaluating players. Don't let some dude in Illinois put a five-star label on it and say, oh, we need to have that guy. That's not how it's done. And so, yeah, these, these two quarterbacks came out and just didn't really have the success that they were pegged to have. 
and are reinventing themselves in the yep. and, and I think the they're in the process anyway of reinventing themselves. I think Quincy's off to a pretty good start. I think uh, you know Theo Day has has got his team. And I think they're pretty confident in offense now. And here's the thing about Mark Farley and here and most good programs, uh, they don't care uh, about feelings really. Nope. They want the guy. Well, yeah. to your starter. Thank you very much. So what? Guess what? We're moving on to a different guy. We want. We think this guy will help us in the long term and and reach Frisco. And that's how it's done. And and so they have certainly switched to Theo Day. Well, they got some dudes, as you know, always on defense. Uh, Jared Brinkman is the reigning Valley Player Defensive of the Year uh, from the spring season. Their linebacker, uh, Cavalier, is just a monster. Is two-time already Valley Defensive Player of the Week. Had 17 tackles last week. And you know Benny Sapp and Omar Brown on the back end. This is a typical Northern Iowa team, Jeff. All three levels, they got dudes. Yeah, they, they do every year. I mean, yep. they, and most years. I should, there's a couple years there. I think in 2019 it was seemed like a down year. The Bison really handled them, but they they and yet they made the quarterfinals that year, even with the a, you know quote unquote down year. Okay, yeah, they're, they're always good. I mean, <laughs> they've got athletes. Farley's been around there forever. Most tenured coach, I believe, in or well, yeah, Farley would be in the Gateway slash Missouri Valley. He is the elder statesman. Yep, he is. Finds guys, you know, you, you hear about NDSU out recruiting these to this team, this team, and this team. You don't really hear so much about Northern Iowa out recruiting other people, but we know it happens. And there's a lot of players out there. There, there's just a yep. lot of players out there, and you can't get everybody. So that they, they, it'll, it, this is going to be a great game. Well, I was interested in what Matt Ens, uh, said when I asked him Monday about. This, for Northern Iowa, their quarterback is a transfer. Their star uh, running back is a transfer from uh, Kansas. It's still an FBS program, last we checked. That's, is this the new formula to go? And he said, Farley's not going to uh, ignore it. Can't put your head in the sand. And, and Farley acknowledged that during the spring uh, mm -hmm. press conference about, yes, he did. Uh, about taking on transfers. I just find it, this is the new road, Jeff. We're going to see it throughout FCS with guys with rosters littered with guys from the FBS. Well, I won you. I mean, yep. you you got to. Yeah. Because you're losing guys. Correct. And guys. Well, yeah. look at the guys that Northern Iowa lost. I mean, just from uh, that transferred out or opted not to play. Spencer Brown and Ellerson Smith both could have been on that field in April in Cedar Falls, and they both ended up getting drafted in the NFL. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. I that game in 2019, what a game that could have been with the yep. field. Or, I mean, I should say 2020, that never yep. happened. Well, the, the talent that could have been on that field, you're talking Trey Lance, Adam Colefield. Uh, who am I missing? I, you know, Radens. Carson Schoenig. Yep. Um, yeah, Radens, of course. Jabril, I suppose, would have transferred. But, you know, well, what, Northern Iowa had four guys who are playing at the next level now, so holy yeah. cow. Yeah. Yeah, it just and Farley last spring when we talked to him um, before the, the the game, or maybe it was post game. I can't remember, but he he, he said he thought quite possibly that would have been the most talent on the yeah. field in one game in Valley history. That's saying something. Let's chat here about the Bison heading into this game. Obviously, a little banged up. We still don't know the status of Jalen Sundell or Brayden Thomas. Well, those are two starters. The Bison. Uh, definitely need in the game. They found a way to win at UND. Offense wasn't pretty, Jeff, but they found it at the, at the end. I am interested to see what Tyler Roll cooks up this week. You, uh, finding a way to get Christian Watson the ball. He's got to touch the ball. Well, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> he can't go two games in a no. row without your probably top pro prospect and not getting the ball somehow, some way. I felt like they used him a little too much as a decoy. Yeah, against UND, and just instead of just giving him the ball, uh, Lipke is. Uh, I, I like saving him till the second half. I think that's a good move. You can't bang him every game. That's a long. No. You know, I, I heard that a couple times. Where was he earlier? Well, you, you don't use everybody all the time. You can't, and especially with this offense where you got weapons here and there is good. And he was blocking as well earlier in the game too for other running yeah, backs, for sure. And, and he's a, and he's also a tight end sort of kind of yep. all over the field Sproles. I think, you know, instead of 
trying to force things in and they just got to happen. Yep. And, and you just can't really, okay, this series, we need to get him involved. This series, we need to get him involved. Well, those guys got to get open, you know, get open and, and you'll get the ball somehow. Right? Well, they, they found out they didn't force it with Gindorf and look at the game he had last week. Yeah. He was pr- uh, probably the best player on the field. I thought, yeah, most talented. I mean, I've talked to a couple of veteran, uh, good football eyes and they thought, they thought Gindorf, you know, a couple of guys that were at the game, they thought Gindorf was the most talented player on the field. Interesting. And Watson didn't get the ball. So we, we really don't know that, but. Um, he was fantastic. I look as well, and the guy you interviewed this week I thought was fantastic was Caden Steindorf, freshman punter thrown into a really tough spot, had three punts inside the 10. I thought that was a guy that UND was going to try to go after, and boy, Jeff, I thought he was really good, I, really yeah. good. Yeah, I did a story on him this week. Interesting kid. He, he got a uh, direct message on Twitter from Nick <laughs> Gator, and he thought it was a joke. He thought <laughs> somebody was playing a hoax on him, like, Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. NDSU wants me, but they got him, but Gazer got him. Uh, somebody at a kicking camp emailed Gazer and said, look at this guy. He's at 15 punts, nine inside the 20 yard line. Man. Punting average is only a half yard more than his average. So it tells me he's getting some hang time. It tells me he's, he's accurate and it tells me he's effective. Correct. He's been really good. Uh, that whole unit. We talked about how much should we talk about it before the season? Reinholz finally made some field goals and, Florentine has been really good at the log snapper and uh, Steindorf's been really good at, at punting. They've been really good so far. Yep. And you need special teams. You need those yep. guys. Good. And yes, he's always been good. They won eight titles with good guys who were really good in those spots and, and, and dependable. Yes. Dependable is, is, is so huge. Uh, you don't have to send them out there and go, Oh my God. Yeah. I hope, <laughs> I hope this works. James Kayser back had an instant impact, obviously, with the sack that he had. I thought, I mean, defensively, Jeff, they've just been out of this world through four games. I mean, they've allowed three touchdowns in four games. Pretty crazy, huh? Do you, do you think they're at 2019 or the standards of other Bison D? Let's see after this week. Talk to okay. me next week, all right? That's then we fair. can ask that question. Yep, that, I, that's good. That's fair. I, I think they're – um, they're deep at, at the at the defensive line. Yep. Linebackers are, are know their know their fits, know their roles, know that I mean they're smart, which just really goes a long way in the Tampa too. And they're pretty athletic in the back end. So uh, I, I think uh, Courtney Eubanks has been outstanding. I want to circle back for people that maybe didn't watch our hot mic on Monday, and I can't believe you wouldn't do that. But I'll ask you as we get set for this weekend's games. The league is better than you thought it would be in 2021 so far? Top oh, bottom. much. Yeah. Oh, not even close. I, I, much better. And especially after last spring, but it was, you know, last spring was last spring yep. players opting out and some players not caring and whatever. And it, it was a spring much better. The quarterbacks are much better. Look yes. at these start, all, there's four teams that are unbeaten. Out, there's, there's five teams that are unbeaten. Four have transferred quarterbacks, South Dakota state, Missouri state, Northern Iowa, and who am I missing? NDSU. NDSU, of course. Yep. And, and so, <laughs> and, and impact players. So, um, and you got to be good at that spot. We know that. We've seen that over the years. If you're not good at quarterback, yeah, good luck in, in making the run through the league and then try to get ready for some playoff games. You got to be good. And and the um, the Valley, they it's just, NDSU set a standard. Everybody else has raised their profile. Correct. Yep. Can I annoy you with a playoff question right now and ask you how many get in right now? You know, you kind of always annoy me, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> what? Five? Yep. Yeah. Five. I think so right now. That would be the number I would think. You think so? Sit here. Five. Hmm. They got six last year out of 16. Yeah, and, I, you know, Big Sky is going to make a run because a lot of those teams aren't playing. Big Sky is going to have probably four, I'd imagine, I'd imagine right, right now. now. The CAA is down, but yes, yep. Somebody, you know, some teams are going to come with out with a good record and then get hammered in the playoffs. I, yep. I just think the CAA is very good this year. I agree. Let's do a couple picks here before we wrap it up, shall we? Right. Speaking let's of the it. CAA, let's start there with the team we always talk about, Villanova. They're at. They take on James Madison this weekend. Is this finally the time they get over the hump like at JMU? You know, I was just about to do some Villanova research. <laughs> I never got to it. 
but I'm going to go with my gut feeling and, and stake in that they're good, but never good enough. Yep. And so I'm, that JMU, I don't know how you go against JMU, even though JMU had a down game, a lot of it can be attributed to three turnovers, but I, I don't know how you can take Nova in this game. I have, by the way, I have to should start over. Kolpak has the lead and the pick him after his brilliant Eastern Washington selection over Montana on Saturday. Massively night. brilliant. Massively. I look at the, the, the big sky games, it. though, this weekend. There's nothing there that stands out. Outside of uh, if you saw what Ed McCaffrey's son did, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Boy, Northern Colorado, yeah. I know you were there a lot in the D2 days, but, man, they just, they just can't get out of their own way. Yeah, um, you know, I haven't paid much attention to them. Nobody they've, has. They've struggled to raise money over the years. And I remember the big sky taking them because they're in the Denver media market. Well, yep. yeah, right. Nobody <laughs> cares about Northern Colorado. If I were to guess right now, I would say Eastern Washington, Montana State, Montana, UC Davis are definitely in. Weber's on the outside right now. So they, they have four definites, I'd say, right now. I, I agree. I, I think that's a solid, solid prediction. All right. Western Illinois at Indiana State. Western, uh, Western's been interesting. They could have won a couple of more games so far this year. I thought Indiana State would be better. God, they're a yep. better team. And maybe we're finding out that not playing last spring wasn't all that great. Yep. You know? And they fell behind. They had a lot of guys back, but maybe it was too much practice. And after a while, you just wear, I don't know. I thought they would be better. They're yeah. surprised for not being better than what they are. I'm taking Western on the road here in Terre Haute. On I am too. I, th- I just feel like they're a little more confident after and, and got some resolve, you know, really coming back in a couple of games. I mean, that uh, the Montana, who was it? Eastern game. I mean, they were blowing out. Yep. Right. Well, then, uh, they got blown out by Montana, gave up 62, yep. but scored 56 on Eastern Washington beat Youngstown at the buzzer and lost in double overtime or overtime to Southern last week. But Eastern had like 42 at half. And, Correct. And then yep. right away. I mean, but they didn't lay down. So no credit Western. Most state goes to Youngstown state. I think the bears are going to be five and one when they come to Fargo. So I got them winning no this question. game. Yeah, no question. Uh, Missouri states um, and, and they're going to run in their the meat of their schedule here pretty quick. Yep. Youngstown. Yeah. I know it's a tough trip, but th- there's a, you know, it, it's a long process to try to rebuild a program that Bo Pelini ran so far in. That yes really surprising but they're, they're trying to build from the high school up and the development and, and and be like ndsu and sdsu and that's just going to take time und at usd usd is a nine point favorite right now what do you make of that uh, i gotta believe i'd take the spread on that even though i don't gamble I mean, yep wow uh, vegas understands the ndsu hangover apparently effect. so <laughs> that was a physical game last week and you can say what you want about NDSU. I, I, I don't feel like they threw everything in their, the old Super Bowl mentality. And I'm not sure UND did either, but yeah. they, played hard. they played so hard. I don't know if you can do that week in and week out the way they play. Their defense was outstanding. Yes. So I'm who you got? You're going with who here? <laughs> I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take UND. Okay. I'm with you. I think they win this game on the road. USD has been good. They've been in every game. I think this is a tight game. I'm absolutely with you on the spread. I think it's closer than that, but I think UND wins. SIU at South Dakota State. This is round three. This is the third time these schools will have played since March. They played in the regular season in Carbondale. They played the playoff game in Brookings, and now here we go again with what should be, I think, a dynamite game on Saturday. Well, I I don't think so. I don't think the third time is going to be a charm. Okay. I've been, I haven't been real impressed with SIU of late. Just uh, the way they went about, and they're a veteran team. They got they've had the, to come from behind both the last two weeks to win. Yep. Yeah, veteran teams don't do that. They don't. Veteran teams go in and Western and bury them. You know, they they know about South Dakota State. They don't have to worry about looking ahead. And so there's just something maybe not as potent or powerful about SIU as as we thought. Maybe the quarterback is a little in flux. He's been okay. Yeah. Been South Dakota State's playing so well. I think they win by two or three touchdowns. Ooh, blowout. That's what happened yes. in Carbondale last year. I think the Jacks win as well, uh, probably by 10, I think. They're, they're, South Dakota State is really, really good right now. A reminder, Bison Game Day live, 10 a.m. on Saturday morning on WDAY. Jeff, myself, and a cast of thousands will be there. And then early kickoff, 1 o'clock for Northern Iowa 
and NDSU. Homecoming, always a fun day, and uh, we're looking forward to what should be a great day on Saturday, Jeff. Yeah, and we got Chuck Clayball on the pregame show. Yeah, right? he'll be by as well. It's going to be good stuff. Yeah, he was a member of the Bison time. Hall of Fame. So for Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest Kolpak and Izzo podcast brought to you by Gate City Bank.